First, I'll go ahead and create a new project. Next, I'll connect to my database. I'll create a new database with the name Northwind ACL. Let's insert the Northwind sample into this database. We'll need to add membership to our database in order to implement an access control list. Now that our database is configured, let's go ahead and add a few models. First, let's start with products. Let's also add categories. and suppliers. We'll also need to enable shared business rules. Enabling this feature will generate a new class file in the project called Shared Business Rules. All controllers will be routed through this class, and all controller and individual business rules will inherit from the class. Let's proceed to generate the application. Let's go ahead and log in as admin. Notice that we have access to products, categories, suppliers, and membership pages. If we log in as user, we have access to the first three pages. Let's go ahead and enable the access control list. From the project action page, press develop. Let's create a file with the name acl.json. Let's make sure that our access control list is enabled by setting the property enabled to true. Go ahead and refresh the page. Now that the ACL is enabled, all options except the home page will disappear. For admin, they'll be able to access the home and membership pages by default. The modus operandi for the access control list will be to deny access for everything. We'll need to enable access for each user or role as needed. Let's enable access to some of the resources in our application. The two primary resources that we can grant access to are controllers and pages. Let's go ahead and grant access to the page suppliers to the users role. Add a permissions property. The value will be another object. 
with the key page.suppliers. The value of that key will be the user's role. Go ahead and refresh the page. We can now see the suppliers page on the site menu. By navigating to this page, we'll notice that we don't have access to any suppliers. I also don't have access to the insert command. In order to gain access to these actions and rows, I will need to enable it in the access control list. Let's add another key to our permissions object with the name controller.suppliers.read. The value of this property will be the user's role again. Let's go ahead and refresh the grid. Notice that we now have access to the list of 29 suppliers. We do not have access to the edit and delete buttons, nor can we insert a new record. Both the user and admin roles have access to read all 29 suppliers. The access control list allows basic control through specifying create, read, update, or delete permissions, also known as CRUD. Let's go ahead and add a few of these permissions. Let's go ahead and add create and update. Create will be granted to the administrator's role. Update will be added to the user's and administrator's role, specified in a comma-separated list. Let's refresh the page. I am now logged in as user. I cannot insert a new supplier. I can, however, edit suppliers. Let's try switching to the admin user. Notice that we can now insert new suppliers. We have fairly broad control over controller access using the CRUD operations. We can also change our controllers by introducing modifications to the controller with the help of custom permissions. Let's go ahead and create one now. First, let's create a folder called permissions under the app. Next, let's create our custom permission for the supplier's controller with the name Full Access. The permission we created would apply to the supplier's controller. If we want a permission to apply to all controllers, Replace the name of the controller with underscore any. Under permission definitions, we can specify an allow and a deny script. For a deny rule, if the user is denied a specific permission, that script will then be engaged. For allow permissions, this script will only be triggered when the user does have access to the permission. These scripts correspond to the methods on the node set class.
the same methods used for data controller virtualization. Our deny script will select all views, select data fields, and issue the delete command. Next, let's add this permission to our ACL file. This permission will be granted to the administrator's role. Let's see this in action. Refresh the browser. Notice that when we're logged in as admin, we have access to the address, city, region, and postal code fields. If we switch to the user account, we'll notice that those fields are now missing. The user does not have permission to access those columns. From the user's perspective, those columns do not exist regardless of whichever interface they use to access our application. Next, let's see how to use an allow rule. Our allow rule will select the views grid1 and set the label list of suppliers. Go ahead and refresh the page. Nothing has changed for the user. The user does not have access to this permission, so the allow script will not run. If we switch to the admin account, notice that it now says list of suppliers. This is a simple yet effective method to define a set of permissions that correspond with logical ideas. The other important aspect of security is to control which rows users are allowed to access. Let's create a new access permission. The name of the file will be access dot underscore any for any controller dot country where the data controller contains the field country dot all dot json. Let's specify a deny permission. We'll specify the name of the field country in square brackets. not equal to USA. This deny rule is an arbitrary SQL expression. This SQL expression will be injected as a filter to any select operations that occur on any controller if the controller contains the country field. This particular rule will filter to records where country is not equal to USA. Notice that the five suppliers in the USA have disappeared. It is also possible to use business rule parameters, such as at business rules underscore user ID to pass the current user's ID. Here is a possible example. Next, let's add this permission to users with administrative role.
Notice that as the admin account, I can see 30 records. Flipping to the user account, there are only 25 records. One problem with this access control list configuration is that your admins or managers may not be intimately familiar with every controller, field, and view in your application. A solution to this problem is to use permission groups. Let's create a group now. Under the permissions folder, create a file called group.suppliermanagement.json. Let's specify an allow permission. In this case, we'll have multiple, so we'll use an array. Let's go ahead and copy our permissions from the access control list. We'll want to remove the role names. This permission group will now grant access to the page suppliers, allow reading, creating, updating suppliers, as well as the custom full access permission, and will also remove the filter on the country field. If we refresh the page, we no longer have access to suppliers. We'll go ahead and add our custom permission group to the administrator's role. As soon as I do that, we'll then gain access to the suppliers. The user still does not have access to the supplier's page or controller. If I log in as admin, we can see suppliers will show up in the sitemap. We can insert, edit, and we can find suppliers from the country USA.